So like last time, before we state the theory that we're going to be interested in, we have to do some philosophy of language. This time, the, the notion that's going to be important is that of a context-sensitive word. The idea behind a context-sensitive word is that some, with certain kinds of vocabulary, what exactly they mean is in some sense dependent on who or when or in what kind of context they're being used. So to warm up, we can just start by thinking about a few examples. A really simple example of context-sensitive word is just the word I. So consider the sentence, I'm hungry, as said by me versus as said by you. Now in one sense, we're saying the same thing. We're both using a sentence that has the same meaning. But there's another sense as well in which what we're saying is quite different. What we mean by using the sentence is quite different. Because of course, when I say I'm hungry, I'm talking about me, David Boylan. But when you say I'm hungry, you're talking about you, whoever you are. So the reference of the word I there seems to depend on the person that's using it. Another kind of example are quantified expressions. So take the sentence, every student got an A. We can imagine using this sentence in a variety of different settings. So contrast me saying that sentence of the students in my class versus maybe your high school teacher saying that in their class. What exactly we're talking about when we use the phrase every student seems to vary. I'm talking about the students in my class. Your high school teacher is talking about the students in their class. So again, in some sense, the meaning of the phrase seems to vary depending on the context in which it's used. One more example, just because we talked about them recently, counterfactuals are also context-sensitive expressions. So this, this famous example from Quine, compare the sentence, if Julius Caesar had fought in Korea, he would have used nuclear weapons, versus if Julius Caesar had fought in Korea, he would have used catapults. Depending on what kind of context we're in, we can hear either of these two things as being true. So if we're in a context and what we're, what we're really interested in is what would Julius Caesar have done had he been in the American military, we can hear the first sentence as being true, and of course the second sentence doesn't sound true. On the other hand, if we're thinking about a more wacky scenario where somehow Caesar got, you know, time traveled from Rome into the middle of the Korean War, we would think of the second conditional that says he used catapults rather than nuclear weapons as being true. This is a slightly more subtle kind of context sensitivity because it's not necessarily sensitivity to who is doing the talking or when the talking is being done. Rather, it seems to be something more like sensitivity to the facts that we're holding fixed or the, or the background questions that we're interested in. But it's another kind of context sensitivity nonetheless. And one thing that, in fact, that's important that it shows is that um, context sensitivity can arise through a variety of different kinds of factors. So we're going to say that a context is just a kind of concrete speech situation. So it includes a speaker, it includes an audience, it includes a time, a place, it happens in a particular possible world. All these features go into a linguistic context. And a context-sensitive expression, roughly speaking, is one where its meaning changes according to which context it's being used in. Now at this stage, we need to be a little bit more concrete about how we're thinking about meaning. Because as we said at the beginning, when we think about a sentence like, I'm hungry, there's some sense in which on the two occasions it has the same meaning, and there's a different sense in which it has a different meaning. So we got to be clear about what these two different things are. To work up to saying what it exactly means to say that an expression is context sensitive, we're going to try to unpack a bit these two different notions of meaning that we talked about a moment ago. Because when we looked at some of these examples, we said that, well, in some sense, the phrase as used in the two different contexts means the same thing, but in a different sense, it seems to mean a different thing. So we'll try to unpack these two different notions of meaning. Let's focus again on a simple example. So here we have the sentence, I'm hungry, and it's being said by two different people in two different contexts. We'll imagine in one context, it's being said by me, David Boylan, but in another context, it's being said by Barack Obama. And of course, as we said, so in some sense, I'm saying the same thing as Barack Obama is, but in a different sense, we're saying different things because I'm saying David Boylan is hungry, Barack Obama is saying Barack Obama is hungry. 
So the crucial thing to recognize first is that even though the propositions we're asserting are different, the same rule is being used in both cases to determine what proposition that is. So I'm focusing just on I. There is a particular rule that's being used in both cases to figure out who the referent is. So in my case, the word I refers to David Boylan. In Barack Obama's context, the word I, as used by him, is referring to Barack Obama. But the rule is the same in both cases. The rule is I refers to, the word I refers to whoever the speaker in that context is. Because in my context, it's me. It refers to me, David Boylan. Because in Barack Obama's context of Barack Obama, it refers to Barack Obama. So the sense in which the phrase has the same meaning for both of us is that the same rule is being used in both cases to determine what exactly we're saying. The same rule is being used to determine that when I say I, it means this person, and when Barack Obama says I, it means this person. The rule in both cases is I refers to the speaker. The sense in which we mean different things, however, is that we end up asserting different propositions. I end up asserting the proposition that David Boylan is hungry, and Barack Obama ends up asserting the proposition that Barack Obama is hungry. We'll call the first notion of meaning in which we're saying the same thing the character of the expression. Um, so despite the fact that when we use the sentence we use it to say different things, it has the same character on both occasions. We'll reserve the word content for the sense in which we mean different things. So the content of this sentence, as said by me, is the proposition that David Boylan is hungry, and the content of the sentence as said by Barack Obama is the proposition that Barack Obama is hungry. And there's a way to simplify this way of thinking about the relationship between character and content, because we can just think of it as a simple formula, that character is basically a function that takes us from a particular context to the content that the word expresses in that context. So the character, you give it whatever the, spe the speech situation that you're interested in is, and it tells you what is its content in that context. So for instance, in this situation with I, the character is a rule that takes you from a context and spits out whoever's speaking in that context. So here, it's David Boylan, there it's Barack Obama. This will be our more general rule, that character is a thing that takes you from a context to a content. And when we put it like this, we can then use these notions of character and content to define the notion of being context sensitive. For an expression to be context sensitive is for its character to sometimes give you different contents depending on the context in which it's used. So by this criterion, I will be context sensitive, but if you think about the other examples we used on the list earlier, those will also end up being context sensitive by this criterion. There are going to be two important facts about context and context sensitivity that will be important for our discussion about contextualism about knowledge. So the first is that in the sense that we're using context, because we're using it in a slightly special way, the context is actually always changing. So remember, we said a context is a concrete speech situation, and one of the things that's involved in that is the time. But of course, time is always passing. So in some sense, in some subtle sense, the context of, of, of utterance is always changing. And we can actually see that show up in certain context-sensitive words. So consider the discourse that I have in the handout. So now the dog is eating garbage. Now he's getting sick. Now he's eating garbage again. The word now here is a context-sensitive word because it picks out the time at which you're, you're using the phrase. But of course, as you say each subsequent sentence, uh, you're moving through time. Each use of now is said at a slightly different time. So here it's actually crucial that the context is changing, because the fact that the context is changing is exactly what explains the fact that the word now refers to different times on each usage. As we saw before, it has the same content. The rule is the same in every case. The rule is, give me the context and I'll pick out the time at which the speaker is speaking in that context. But because the context is changing by virtue of the fact that time is passing, 
a different time is selected in, in every case. So that's why the word now changes its referent from one sentence to the next. The second important point is about how we assess context-sensitive sentences. So if I use a context-sensitive sentence and somebody else wants to figure out is what I've said true or false, how do we do that? Well, when you think through some of the examples we saw earlier, the answer is pretty, looks like it's pretty straightforward. You take the sentence, you see, well, what context was it uttered in? You figure out, well, what content did you thereby express? So what proposition did you thereby express? And you evaluate that proposition for truth or falsity. In particular, what you don't do, if you're evaluating what I said in using a sentence on a particular occasion, you don't say, what proposition would it express in my context and go off and evaluate that proposition. That would be the wrong way to figure out whether what I have said is true or not when I used a context-sensitive expression. So let's just see that a little bit more concretely. We'll return to our example of me and Barack Obama being hungry. So suppose Barack Obama overhears me saying that I'm hungry. He overhears me saying this sentence and he wants to evaluate whether or not it's true or false. Well, clearly the right way for him to do it is to say, well, what does that sentence express in David's context? Oh, it expresses the proposition that David Boylan is hungry. That is the content of the sentence in that context. And to then evaluate whether that proposition, that content is true or false. A crazy way, a wrong way for Barack Obama to evaluate this would be to say, oh, what does the sentence used by David express in my context? Oh, it expresses the proposition that Barack Obama is hungry and to evaluate that proposition. That would be a crazy way to evaluate the sentence as said by me. But this leads to an important point about how we assess these things. If I use a context-sensitive expression to express a, a particular proposition, everybody should assess what I have said in the same way. Namely, they look at the context of utterance they determine, well, what content does the sentence express in that context of utterance? And they evaluate that proposition. So anybody, whether they're Barack Obama, whether they're me, anybody evaluating my use of the sentence, I'm hungry, will do that by looking at the context in which it was used, figuring out that the content is that David Boylan is hungry, and evaluating that proposition for truth or falsity. Everybody assesses particular uses of context-sensitive sentences in the same way. This might seem like actually a relatively trivial point, but we'll see it's actually very important. This feature of context sensitivity, that everybody should assess context sensitive expressions in the same way, or that everybody should assess particular uses of context sensitive expressions in the same way, is going to lead to the disagreement problem about contextualism, which is something we're going to talk about in a few weeks.